Okay. Got it. Okay, All good right. morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Grant Cameron, and I am joined again tonight by my friend Les Velez, uh, who is um, associated with OPUS, the Organization for Paranormal Understanding and Support. And they have a new book out called The Unknown Other. And uh, welcome, Les, and thanks for joining me. And I'm interested to hear about uh, the new book you've come out and the research you're doing. Well, thank you very much, uh, Grant, and Happy New Year. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, and I hope it's a hell of a lot better than uh, 2021. <laughs> yeah, it's all lessons, they say. So we'll, we'll yeah. go with what we, we, we get, to, uh, the cards we get dealt. Oh, my God. Well, you know, you mentioned the OPUS, the Organization for Paranormal Understanding and Support, which I co-founded in 1994. And um, since that time, you know, uh, myself and a number of other people in our organization have been trying to help people that uh, claim that they've been contacted by non-human intelligences. And so finally, after many years of people cajoling me to write a book, uh, I finally did, and, and, and as it's, the title is The Unknown Other and the Existential Proposition of Alien Contact. And, you know, from a philosophical standpoint, uh, you know, we're talking about, well, this is, you know, life and death type stuff. Uh, possibly. Yeah. Um, but from a logical standpoint, it, it, it's like, you know, are we talking about something that's true? That's, that's, that's for real. Yeah. And so what I tried to do in the book is to uh, hit those points and bring out the various aspects of the abduction phenomena. Uh, and, and so it, it, it goes across the gamut as far as, you know, describing how these things uh, go down, uh, the psychological effects, the physical effects that occur. Uh, I talk about uh, the debunkers, you know, talking about, well, it's false memory. Uh, uh, it's uh, fantasy proneness. It's, uh, you know, so many other things that uh, people bring up. Uh, the bottom line on, the, on this is that uh, based on um, a study that we did back in 2010 uh, called the Omega-3 study, uh, where we took 71 uh, people that claimed to be experiencers and 51 people as a control group, we found that these people did not have a psychopathology. Uh, so they're not crazy. Uh, but, you know, having, having said that, so what, what is going on with them? Uh, you know, we talk about in the book the uh, the aliens themselves, uh, what what people describe. Uh, uh, we talk about uh, previous studies that have been done. Uh, <clears throat> besides uh, Gary Nolan's, going back to the 70s, uh, various uh, scientists have looked at the Code Potamen area and as as a, as a factor in, in people's uh, ability to have psychic, uh, uh, you know, characteristics. So I, I cover a lot of different bases in the book and including the, the recent UAP report uh, uh, by the federal government. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, that, that is such a, a, a positive thing, I, I believe, even though it was lacking a lot of information, nevertheless, that they've stepped up and, and are actually starting to look at this. And of course, the next thing that, that's possible with that is the fact that they're gonna start really paying attention to the people that have had these experiences with you know, contact with non-human intelligences. Okay, <clears throat> uh, can I ask what your data set is? I mean, you go right back to 47 with the contactees or are you just dealing with um, abductees? Or I guess what you call abductees and uh, how many were in the study that, 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 that make up the book? Well, the, the Omega-3 study was a, a total of 71 people that were experiencers and then 51 as a control group. However, over the course of, you know, working with the, uh, these people, uh, there's over 300 people that uh, we, have, we have worked with. And there's about 25 stories uh, from uh, people in the uh, support group, the online support group um, of OPUS, uh, that have told their stories, which are extremely interesting. And I think people, uh, when they get the book, would, would, would also concur with that, that uh, they're telling some fascinating, fascinating stories. 
Um, you mentioned the government. You, you, um, I had just did an interview with um, Deborah Cobble, and as you may know, her uh, report was sold by John Carpenter to Bob Bigelow. And that was the material that became the OSAP study, all that material. So can I ask you, did any of your, and I asked her, I said, did, did these guys contact you? I mean, they say they're looking for the answers. They want to know what's going on, the UAP report and all this kind of stuff. Did they contact you? And she said, no. Did they contact any of your people? Do you know? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, you know, I have not heard from any of the people in the group, the support group, or any people that have contacted us uh, over the years. Uh, I mean, people have been contacted, you know, typical men in black type, type uh, scenarios. However, those were mostly warnings uh, instead of, uh, you know, trying to uh, ferret out information, which I think the government is already doing, uh, you know, a la uh, Melinda Leslie's uh, comments uh, and uh, her, her, her uh, experiences uh, where they, they're trying to understand what the hell is going on? You mentioned men in black. What's your take on that? And based upon, I guess, based upon what the people are telling you, I guess some of your people have had these experiences. Maybe you can mention one. And what do you make of men in black? Because, you know, there's there's different interpretations yeah, as to what might be going on. These, these are, just, you know, typical, you know, late model vehicles that pull up. Uh, people getting out of the car that are wearing dark suits, uh, for instance. Uh, coming to the door, uh, very menacing in, in nature, uh, talking to these people, you know, asking questions, and then, you know, basically telling them, well, you know, now that you've had that experience, forget it, and don't, don't mention it to anybody. Um, and we've had a number of people in the group that have, that have had those types of experiences. Um, so I, I believe that, you know, what are they? You know, are they, are they in fact, uh, aliens that are doing this or is it part of our government but the appearances of these these people seem to be somewhat unusual and uh so therefore <laughs> uh, it's lean i kind of lean towards the the alien aspect of it <laughs> i sort of agree with you i think because it's almost like if you've ever done research on lucid dreaming the way you learn to lucid dream is to look at your dreams and look for the dream signs the things that don't make sense and that means like we're missing something here. Right? Some, some, you know, there's some weird move being made here and this doesn't make any sense. It must mean something uh, that, that's giving us a clue. So that that's a, a bizarre thing. We had the uh, the other thing is the helicopters. We had a lot of people have the, the low flying helicopters. I've, I've gotten pictures from uh, people in the support group uh, of helicopters <clears throat> that are basically all black, no, no markings on it. Um, and, uh, you know, right away you start to think, well, uh, you know, is this a, 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 some type of a hologram that, that's going on? Um, some way of actually being able to monitor people? Or is it, is it our government once again? Which I, I kind of think those, those types of things are probably our government. Um, have you had, uh, maybe you could, well, you wouldn't know, but I mean, if you check with your people, how many of them have had UFOs inside the black helicopter photos? I had guy from Great Britain was sending them and then I suddenly discovered there was a bunch of people who, who when you look at the black helicopter photos they've got UFOs in the photographs little orbs sort of flying or you get these stories of of jets where uh suddenly the jets appear and they're chasing the UFO and you start to wonder like what the heck's going on here is the government that ahead of the game because if you remember back the very first UFO sighting really wasn't Kenneth Arnold it was three days before at, at the uh the, the the crash at uh uh, and off the coast of Washington there, and there was men in black there. So, I mean, did they have it organized already that they immediately went and, and sort of uh, put the squeeze on these two guys when the government really didn't even know what was going on? It was the first sort of case. Yeah, I think, I think they, you know, the, the others, if you will, the unknown others are, are, don't want to keep a, a cap on this, this thing for whatever reason. Uh, and, you know, uh, I'm a shot uh, that, that, that Israeli general talks about the fact that, they, you know, we have bases on the moon and on Mars and we're, we're dealing with the aliens and, and that they don't want, you know, to come out because we're not ready. We don't understand space. And I mean, on and on and on. It, it, it's, it's, it's an incredible phenomenon. I mean, you, 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 we, and unfortunately, we don't have all the answers or maybe not, not any. 
Yeah. Uh, maybe you can comment on the, the weird aspect that you probably would know that, that it, it's very weird. It doesn't really make any sense. And the, actually, the more you look at it, the weirder it actually gets when you start seeing subsets of, of things and these don't make sense and that doesn't make sense. And, and so talk a little bit about the weirdness aspect, because you must have seen this over and over again, that these are not just straight some guy uh, had a being in his room and the being took him and or he saw a UFO or whatever. It's never that. It's always this really weird stuff. Yeah, and 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 uh, one of the one of the people in our in our in my book uh, by the name of Adam yeah. um, talks about the fact that uh, he was at the, this Hopi reservation. This is 1995, I guess it was, and uh, he saw this this gray alien behind a pinion tree, and that started a whole progression of of things for him. Uh, vivid dreaming. Uh, and then he got involved with uh, uh, this this uh, mantid type of a, of a creature, and he described it vividly, you know, with the scales and uh, uh, being light green, and there's gold in it in the pores, and I mean his descriptions were just unbelievably, uh, 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 you know, detailed. Um, and then he talks about the fact that uh, these these creatures have known him a long time and then they go into reincarnation that it is a fact that there is a reincarnation and that and he was he's been here many times in many phases uh, and that in order for them to manipulate um, uh, this person to, to be able to take him they disassemble him his atoms and to bring him wherever they need to bring him and then they reassemble them, um, and it, it, it's just mind blowing how how uh, intricate these these descriptions go. I mean, the multiple. He was involved with a hybrid uh, that was a woman, and uh, you know, talking about the hands of the uh, the the uh, grays being just three fingers and a palm, no thumb. Um, and these little indentations on the end of the fingers that were used to process and enable certain things to happen. Like they would put it on a person's head to be able to calm them down. Um, and I mean, it just on and on with, with, with these types of things where um, the, the full description of the various types, not only were they grays, but there were small blue ones that were involved with his abduction. Um, and uh, as I said, this uh, hybrid, uh, which was a woman, uh, which and throughout all of this though, it was a feeling of love. It was a very positive feeling for this particular person. Um, and, and so you, you have the majority, what we found so far is that, you know, probably 70%, 75% of the people that are having these experiences want them to continue. Um, and only that small you know, remainder are saying, no, I, I want it to stop. But again, each particular uh, experience has a plethora of nuances to it that uh, cause one to say, wow, you know, the general thing about being abducted you know, you're put on a table, they probe you, they stick you, they take juice out of you of some sort, and then they put you back. But that in-between process, disassembling your atoms, <clears throat> it's, it's like the transporter, you know, on Star Trek, uh, that, that they supposedly have that capability, and they have no, they can manipulate time and space. And, and so, you know, these instances where people lose, you know, three hours of time, although they, they don't realize it until they look at their watch or somebody tells them, um, is, is, is happening. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You, you mentioned um, this whole thing about, um, you know, 75%. I think the free survey said 83% say no, uh, they wouldn't want it to stop if it did. Do you find this pattern and you can get into how many of these people have been regressed? what you do for these people, because the, the story is put out that the more you know about your experience, the less fearful it becomes, the more you sort of understand, you suddenly see yourself as some sort of messiah that's here to, to save the world or something. Like that's what <laughs> I seem to come across. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, I think certainly there's there's three phases to the to the to the experience. Certainly, the beginning phase for for you know everyone is is quite upsetting, quite terrifying. Um, but then they get you know after you know the initial phase, they get to a point in their experiences where they they feel you know less fear, more comfortable. They they start to accept what's going on. Especially if they if they 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 feel you know uh, a modicum of of uh, of uh, positive uh, things that uh, you know feelings wise. Although <clears throat> in a lot of cases you, you you can't get a feeling from from these creatures at all. I mean it's it's you know totally totally uh, non plus in a way. Um, so. Uh, and then in the latter stages, uh, where people have had multiple, multiple uh, uh, experiences, uh, and they stop, it's almost like the Stockholm syndrome, where people say, "Well, why, why, why did it stop? You know, uh, where are they? How come they're not coming for me anymore?" Yeah. So, you you mentioned the the fact that the beings in some ways don't talk. Um, one of the things that I sort of saw a pattern was that you look at the small grays who are like the worker uh, guys, but there always seems to be one being that seems to deal with the person. One, uh, and, and so have you found that pattern that people, there's one being that seems to deal with them and answer their questions and sort of oversees the whole thing. And these other beings are, there's a lot of beings around, but they're only actually talking to one being. Yeah, the, the telepathic communication is, is the, the main uh, mode, modality that uh, is, is utilized. Uh, uh, and uh, the the small grays uh, seem to be pretty much robotic, you know, biological robotic uh, in nature. Uh, you have the tall grays uh, that do get involved uh, oftentimes, but then the mantis seems to be the overriding uh, ruler of the uh, of the nest, if you will, um, and uh, has that telepathic communication. And, and most of the time. Uh, it, it's a very positive feeling that a person gets uh, in, in working with them. And then, of course, you do have the Nordics, which seem to be in the background, and then sometimes military people, uh, uniforms, uh, you, you know, uh, uniform military people that are also involved. Uh, I've, I've got a case where, uh, you know, the person uh, had drawn a typical gray, uh, and then the next picture was it looked like the gray was wearing a mask with this, these, all these strands of, of a yarn coming out of its head. And <laughs> it was like a mask. It, it, was, it was the silliest looking thing. But it, 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 so what I thought was in that case, it was, it was something uh, where someone did not want this person to recognize who they were. So was it another alien? I don't think so. I think it was perhaps maybe a military type of person that got dressed up. Um, and uh, <laughs> and I well, met... let, let's let's go to the mill the Milab thing because you know Melinda Lessie talked about this an awful lot. Yeah. Uh, what what's your take on that? Do you believe the military is actually working with these beings or are the beings screen imaging as military people? I I think our military is involved. I, I really do. I, I think that uh, you know, based on, and if you would ask me that question, you know, five years ago, I would have said no. Uh, but it seems like more and more facts are coming out. More people are talking about it. You know, we have now a space force. If we have a space force, you know, we got to be involved with them in some way, shape, or form. And then, as I said, it is Haim uh this Israeli general that came out and, you know, who has had, uh, you know, incredible credentials. Uh, uh, said that yeah we're we're working with them so uh, yeah I I think the military is definitely involved uh, and uh, I think they know a hell of a lot more than than uh, uh, they're letting on of course and you know is it the Russians is it the Chinese is it us um, <laughs> I think it's probably some of us but a lot of them. Is that, is that what your people think? The people that you've written up, is that what they think? Uh, like when they encounter the the military, do they take that take that somehow? Because what the, the big question with the military is that if they get caught with one single case where they abducted an American citizen, the whole government falls. I mean, is the it's this risk reward thing where 
where you know it's a it looks like a pretty risky operation if you you know even if you're doing the helicopter thing where you're using black helicopters or whatever i mean we had only did two major operations uh that i know of with these black helicopters that was these the iranian hostage and the bin laden assassination and in both cases we crashed helicopters so it's this whole thing do you think that they could be operating all these years without making some sort of fatal mistake that that exposes the American government to kidnapping American people? <laughs> well, uh, I tell you, it's 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 possible, but probably not probable. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, I think that uh, uh, you, you probably hit the nail on the head with that uh, question, uh, because here's a military operation to get bin Laden. Uh, how the hell they get it up like that but then you have you know humans involved here <laughs> and yeah. uh, we, we we tend to make mistakes and uh, but uh, I think they cover it up very well you know if you believe Kecksburg was was you know a, a UFO and of course they hauled that thing out of there and you know we yeah. we don't know what what happened after that uh, yeah. so it's like people will bring up the the cattle mutilation and you know ten thousand cattle mutilations and I actually I always think like, I mean, do you think it's possible that they could do ten thousand operations with helicopters and not crash one of these helicopters? It seems, <laughs> it, but that's the thing. It's this big mystery, which I think you'd agree. I mean, the more you look at it, the weirder it gets, and the real. I mean, agree with me or disagree with me? Is there really any answers to this when you really come down to it? Well, yeah, and and that's that's true. We 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 don't have definitive answers, you know. Uh, you know, we talk about UFOs being spotted, uh, and cattle being sucked up in a beam of light, um, and uh, so you know, I tend to lean in that direction. That in fact, it is it is the aliens, uh, whoever they are, that are abducting these things for whatever purpose. Uh, you know, maybe it's a uh, they like eyeballs and tongues. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know why our, our military would want to be doing that. I mean, they can just go to some slaughterhouse and get as many as they want, you know, back up a truck. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what Bill Moore had said about the cad relations. Why would you risk the cad relation when you can just go and buy it? The risk yeah. reward is just too high if you get caught trying, trying to get a, a you know, a a $500 cow and you crash a helicopter and the government falls. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. You know, it's sort of, no. there's easier ways to do it. You mentioned, right. you mentioned the reincarnation thing, which really interests me because I know there are cases like this. Chris Bledsoe is a prime example where mm -hmm. he gets asked in the regression in 2008 by Michael O'Connell, the associate of John Mack, when did you first engage with these beings? And he said, before I was born. And then O'Connell says in a past life. And he says, yes. Uh, how does that change everything? If that's true, and these beings are moving from life to life because I think the majority of the UAP reports and all this kind of stuff is assuming that this is just something that started in 1947. It has mm. no spiritual connection. Do you see a spiritual sort of connection in this whole UFO Abs thing? Ab absolutely, absolutely. It, it's a total spiritual journey that these people are going through. Uh, you and I are going through uh, maybe a different spiritual journey. I don't know if you've had an experience yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, m myself, I was, uh, I had one of the support group meetings when we were doing them live in San Jose, uh, a person tell me, I've seen you before. And I said, where, um, you know, the UFO conference? No, no, no. I saw you on board the craft. I said, <laughs> oh, really? And so I, I kind of blew it off. And, uh, so, so it was probably a year and a half, two years later that uh, another person in the support group says, I've seen you before. I said, where a UFO craft? No, no, no. I saw you on board the craft. You were sitting on this bench naked and you were freaking out. And they told me to go over to calm you down. And so at that point, I um, decided to go get regressed. And I had three separate regressions and I did not find anything in light of that type of a thing of uh, being abducted, but I had multiple past lives. And then somebody uh, in a recent conversation I had said, well, maybe you were abducted in a past life. And I totally now, based on more people that have come to me and tell me their stories, that this reincarnation thing is pretty significant. And, and that it, it, is, it is totally going on. Uh, how about pre-birth memories? Have you got some of the cases where you see this kind of stuff where 
they remember before they were born and and this whole thing about you and i like why are you and i down the rabbit hole why can't we sort of keep things together wherever you know your whole family thinks you're kind of nuts and and you can't get out of the rabbit hole you you think that that this is part of why you came to the earth that 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 you got dragged into this thing and that you can't you've got to do this yeah you know that that's a good question grant I, you know i <sighs> It all started, I guess, for me when I was 11 years old, and I, I saw this this craft, um, and and it and and it scared the hell out of me. I went ran in the house, and by the time I got my father to come out, it was gone. But I went to the library and started reading about UFOs, and of course I got older and I kind of forgot about it. You know, went to college, got married, had kids. I moved out to California in 1985. And I picked up the San Jose Mercury News and Stanton Freeman was going to talk about UFOs and the government cover up. And oh, my God, the switch got turned on. You know, I had to go see him. And he did one of his inimitable, you know, uh, lectures. Yeah. And MUFON had a table in the foyer. And I said, well, I, I'm going to start getting their journal. And then I became a field investigator. And then all the cases I got involved with turned out to be abduction type cases. And that's when I... I that's when it really hit me, like, I need to be able to help these people. So I don't have any, you know, childhood, you know, or, or pre-birth, uh, you know, um, remembrances of having a mission, you know. But every time I try to stop this, I get, I get sucked back in. I totally get sucked back in. You know, I get a phone call. I need your help. <laughs> I, I we used to make a joke about that. I, you know how long you've been in this? I've been in this since '75, and I remember we used to have a joke because from time to time you'd say, "This guy's had it. That's it." He's like Jacques Vallée was famous, 1967 already. He said, "I'm quitting. I'm never coming back." And you hear this all the time. And we used to we'd hear it so much, and then the person would come back. We'd always say when when someone say, "Oh, this guy quit." Do you hear this guy quit? And we said, "Nobody quits. He'll be back. Don't worry. Sorry, but he's coming back." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I believe it. I totally believe it. Yeah, it's 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 an amazing thing because you know we we do get little little tidbits every once in a while that really spark that interest further. Um, you know, this year, this past year has been phenomenal as far as you know revelations and, and of what what's what's happening and what's going to happen hopefully. Um, so you know, and it's 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 great that you know we're able to have these kind of conversations and, and uh, you know, try to push the envelope a little bit in some direction, hopefully in the right direction. So, so let's talk about, you mentioned you talked about the UAP report in the, um, mm -hmm. the, the book. Talk a little bit about um, what it is for people who may not be clued into this and what you think, particularly what you think it may mean. Because a lot of times I look at it and I say, you know, this is like uh, they're trying to get money but when you find out, are they talking to Chris Blutz, who's got 30,000 photos and videos? No, they're not talking to him. They're not talking to Deborah Cobble. They're not talking to your people. And then you wonder, like, what are they really doing? So what's your take on the UAP thing? And how is uh, how does it fit into the to the book and the people that you're dealing yeah. with? Well, I think I think, uh, you know, Lou Elizondo um, probably struck the right chord as far as trying to get um the government to really look at this. I think you know, from a threat standpoint, whether it is or not, doesn't matter because I think the only way our government's gonna move forward is the fact that, well, this is a possible threat. And so, uh, as I said, I think Lou, you know, went in the right direction on how to, to, to uh, get the government to move forward. Uh, <clears throat> now, the, the the latest revelation on all that is is the fact that now there's supposedly uh, you know an official group, but are they funded? Uh, do they have uh, the ability to do anything? That's that's a big question, uh, head scratcher. And you know, are they trying to bury it uh, in some way, shape, or form? I don't know the uh, the, the name of the new uh, group right now. I don't know if you know it. Uh, yeah, it's some weird. It's they keep changing yeah. the name to sort of throw everybody off. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's like who's on first, you know? It's yeah. like um, so, you know. I, I don't know. It, it, it only time will tell uh, if we get the next report, uh, which is supposed to come up what in the uh, next four months or so, once a quarter, I think it's supposed to happen. 
Now, do you think do you think this is military? Are they looking at military stuff? Because um, I don't see any indication that they're going to look at civilian stuff. Just simply military encounters with UFOs, because that's where the money's yeah. going to come from. Is, yeah. is to say this is a threat to uh, to the military right. and stuff like that. And uh, so, do you yeah. think do you think it's just military, or do you think there may be some chance, like through the Senate, forcing it that we take a, a wider look? The other thing that I noticed that they didn't do was uh, if you know the John Podesta story, John Podesta said that he was gonna talk to Biden about this and he wanted it in the OSTP, which is the Office of Science and Technology Policy for the president, which is the president's science advisor, that we need science to look at this. So far, what I've seen is it's the Armed Services Committee and Intelligence, which means it's, it's strictly military. There, there doesn't seem to be any interest in, in civilian anything of, of, with this. So what, what's your take on that? Yeah, I, I think that uh, there's something going on behind the scenes. I, I, I could not believe that they didn't get the, the scientific community involved in a big way, yeah. but they don't want to put it out there. They just don't want this. They're trying to keep a lid on it as best they can, I think, at this point. Um, and I, I, I think that uh, they're already probably talking to experiencers. I, matter of fact, <clears throat> I, I, you know, again, based on what I've heard, uh, is, is the fact that uh, our government is talking to these uh, experiencers, trying to find out information on who, the, you know, what are they dealing with, the experiencers, uh, what's their, what's their uh, a mission, uh, you know, trying to glean as much information. But again, that is, that is something that is really kept close to the vest. Uh, you're, you're just not going to hear about it. Well, if you do hear them talking about uh, to civilian people, I'd be very interested. I think they talked to Whitley and I think they talked to um, uh, Chris Bledsoe. But other than that, uh, to me, it looks like they're doing military people that because it's easier to get their medical files. You can't get civilian. It's the old Title 10 or whatever they call it. You're not allowed to, you know, you know, uh -huh. spy on American people. So it's been military. Have you ever talked to any of these people? Because, you know, Gary Nolan's an exper uh, a full-blown experiencer. Eric Davis had the sighting when he was graduating with his PhD, he had the sighting which put him down the rabbit hole. Uh, Jim Semivan had the beings in his room. Uh, Hal Putoff, there was always a rumor that Hal Putoff had some sort of experience, but we know for a fact that his son had an experience after the Phoenix Lights, that his son saw the giant triangle in in yeah. uh, Phoenix. Have you ever talked to any of these high level uh, people working on Robert, this thing? Robert, Robert, Salas, Rob, Robert Salas and his wife, both are experiencers. Yeah. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had a nice conversation with them. Uh, they told me their whole story uh, at the uh, MUFON Symposium in August. And uh, uh, it was fascinating. And uh, his wife uh, became a healer after that experience. She had the capability to heal people, uh, which is another factor that you hear about. Not, not only people getting healed, but also becoming healers. Yeah. And I've had the experience of working with a healer, one of the people in our support group. I had a back issue and uh, had two sessions with this person. And he was in Vancouver and I'm here in Texas. Wow. And I was cured. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the know, thing that you could almost do books on all these different topics, just the healing thing. I mean, because a lot of them, if you, unless you ask them, they really won't tell you that they're doing this kind of stuff. You mentioned uh, Salas. I remember I made a joke. People got upset about it. And I said, it's almost like the uh, this is their their uh, uh, inside operation that they shut down the nuclear missiles. And it's their guy, their abductee experiencer who's in this in the, the, the silo. It's like they've got the guy in there. It's like it's all planned. It's, a, you know, like what's the chances that Salas is in the, the silo when they shut the missiles down. And you, and the other one is uh, Robert Hastings. Now, Robert Hastings has come public and said that he's an experiencer as well. Almost mm -hmm. like once you touch the subject, like once you see your UFO and you get dragged in, it's almost like you attract the phenomena to you. And so again, it comes to this idea of how much of this is random in terms of you and I and Hastings and Salas, where we're involved in this thing, but then we find out, oh, we're actually really involved. We're not just... Uh, observers standing on the outside were actually part of this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that that's a good that's a good question and and, and one that uh, you know, as I said before, I, I've many times tried to back myself out of all of this, but then I get sucked right back in, and <laughs> it's like you got a mission, you know, buddy, and yeah. you're not getting out. You got to do this, you know, and yeah. and maybe it's because it's like. 
these people are that are, are, are coming to us looking for help, uh, yeah. whether it's a hypnotherapy or just joining a support group, um, they, 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 if we can help them, um, that, that's really a good thing because it can keeps the lid on things, so to speak. It keeps the lid on, and if, if you believe the agenda of these aliens is to eventually um, maybe take over, uh, as some people have posited, or, or yeah. you know, then, then that's probably a good thing to do, because you don't want to all of a sudden have people running around saying the sky is falling. <laughs> well, if you, if you have the reincarnation thing, and I always said that was part of my download I had in 2017 was this thing. If it's one life, that's one world with certain rules and regulations. But if it's reincarnation, everything changes. And that's the whole thing with this is if you look at the reincarnation angle, then you and I probably came in for some sort of reason. It's not like this is like random, you know, you just end up in a body and you don't know what's going on and, <laughs> and things randomly happen to you. You start to realize that there may be some sort of overall pattern where we're coming in. And even the thing where you and I, like you and I are not young guys anymore. And a lot of right. people will say, when I'm 65, I'm going to retire and I'm going to sit and drink Mai Tais on the, the Hawaiian <laughs> beach. And nobody retires in the UFO field. We're still actually busier now than we were before. It's like, oh, now we got we can do it full time. And so it, it's like something where we'll die, do it till the day we die. Yeah. I mean, luckily, we can do it behind a computer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sitting in a chair uh, <laughs> or a wheelchair as the case may be but uh yeah it, it is it is an incredible phenomenon and i think that uh you know all all the all these paranormal factors are all all part of the same thing uh whether or not you're talking about poltergeist activity orbs uh you know grays uh uh you know it's it, it's all connected in some yeah. in, you know phenomenal way do you think like i do that this is the biggest story of all times that if people actually understand what's going on there's no bigger story than what we're dealing with totally i totally agree with that grant i, I mean th this this is beyond just you know an alien you know coming down and you know like uh, landing the saucer on a, on the white house lawn yeah. th this is beyond that this goes back to your question about spirituality yes this is a whole spiritual journey that involves factors uh, that are beyond our our way of understanding. I think you know some people have you know maybe dug in deeper and gotten a little bit more answers. You know, and they talk about the source. And uh, matter of fact, Adam in our book talks about meeting the source. Wow. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, and of course the source never talked to him never said anything just you know he just intuited that it this was the source <laughs> so that's, that's almost like betty andreas in with the one where she went through the six books i remember when she finally got the sixth book she said i'm finally going to say what the, the one told me i could not wait to get that book i was like holy <laughs> cow finally we're going to find out what the one said to her and that was that whole <laughs> idea where people don't realize this kind of stuff but again i think you would agree that a lot of people are getting these sort of stories where they're being told stuff. So maybe go through a little bit of the messages, what what these people are being told by these beings. Yeah, the, it seems to me that the, the real common uh, thread through all of this is that, uh, you know, we we need to be better stewards of, of the planet. Uh, you know, it, 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 whether it's, you know, not utilizing fossil fuel, the, the way we are uh, to to look at other alternatives uh, to energy, uh, you know, being better to to one another, uh, and, and so these are all very positive positive things. Um, and of course, then you you have people saying, well, the, these these entities are are lying to us. They're they're just you know telling us a story to make us feel good. Uh, you know, and then and behind the scenes, they're they're doing things uh, with the uh, these abductees, whether it's you know uh, creating hybrids that are eventually going to take over the planet. Um, you know, as uh, 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 David Jacobs talks about the hybrids, you know, and they're, they're getting so good at this that you can't recognize. Maybe you and I are both hybrids. I don't know, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, Maybe that's why we're so interested. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah. Uh, you, so, so uh, have you had um, you 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 read the I guess the skin market the Pentagon? Maybe you can comment a little bit on that book as it relates to your book and the idea. Like the, one of the big things they brought up was the orbs, which kind of surprised me. Was this idea about these these evil blue orbs? And mm -hmm. Ben Andreessen has the blue orb that follows her around. And they actually say to her at one point, they say, well, do you think it's protecting you? She said, yeah, I think it's protecting me. And this idea with they have orbs. Have a lot of your people had these orb experiences? Because you mentioned. Oh, you yes. Get, yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, yes. Orbs. Uh, and <laughs> um, I was just looking at some notes. Um, you know, the one thing that the people talk about, um, and uh, not only people, but uh, uh, we, we just recently finished the first phase of the Omega-4 study, where we actually uh, got a hold of therapists that have worked with experiencers. And um, the number one entity that they talk about are the grays. But following that, it's orbs. Orbs are the number two thing that people talk about, uh, which is the first time I've really heard that, that it was so high on the scale. I mean, it, you know, the great people, these are the people in your book. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, the next thing is interdimensionals. Uh, and then the fourth thing was ghosts, poltergeist <laughs> um, activity. Um, <laughs> what, what, you know, going back to the grace for a second, um, it seems like all these different entities utilize grace. So there must be some kind of a supermarket out in the universe where they all go to the same supermarket and okay, I need I need a couple of grays. It's like a you know an iPhone. <laughs> you, you, you have a gray, you know that's that's the one you want to use. And uh, you know we're coming out with the next version next year, gray two one or something. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it's. Uh, so, so the orbs. What do they? What do the people think? Do they have the reports of you know the the, the faces in the orbs that they believe that they're dead people? Or they believe that they're aliens, or they have you had that kind of stuff? Well, I've I've had a personal experience uh, with an orb. Um, this was in Sedona. Um, I had a a friend that was uh, taking taking pictures uh, because she she felt. Uh, that uh, she would get a feeling that there would be an orb. And so she would get her camera and she would just start clicking away on her camera. This is back in the, uh, well, it was a digital camera. And um, I was sitting on the back porch and it was already dusk and she felt that there was going to be an orb. And so she started taking pictures of me because she felt it was going to be over my head. And oh my God, the picture is of this red orb with like a little yellow cap on it. And every time she, you know, she took, took multiple pictures and this orb actually moved in the digital you know, picture. Wow. Uh, it, the little yellow cap would, would actually move. And then she showed me pictures that she had taken and blown up of orbs and all, the grays were in the in the orb. You, one was like really close to the camera, like this, or to the to the front of it. And then there was another one in the background, and they were looking in different directions, like they were looking through this portal. So these orbs can be some type of a small portal that's actually happening. Um, and then you know, like you say, and 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 that. Uh, uh, skinwalkers at the Pentagon uh, book, they talked about, you know, these things causing issues, but also I've heard just the opposite, uh, where these orbs have gone into people's body, and uh, like this one person, uh, uh, Kathleen Martin, that uh, talks about it, in, I think one of her books, yeah. uh, where it went into this guy that had cancer, yeah. and after that happened, he was cured, <laughs> his, his cancer went away. Yeah, the, he's local here. He's he's a friend of mine, um, and so it, it's a case I'd heard about when it happened with the video. Uh, but you you get you get this um, this sort of a a deal where in the Skinwalkers, and maybe you can sort of re reflect whether you know anything about this, is that it seems to uh, if you look at Br Brandon Fugel says the phenomena is reflective. So the people that have the problems with the phenomena are the people who are aggressive towards it or. Uh, you don't have the proper attitude. 
And uh, the, the guys, if you remember the story about the three guys, I and mean, this will get, get to a question about hitchhikers. When you get the three guys that were on the road, my impression was these were former special forces, uh, hard nosed guys, they were armed and they were the ones that got the message in their head, leave, you are not welcome. And they took the hitchhiker home to them, but there are other hitchhikers. Hmm. And I want to ask you if you had any of these hitchhiker cases where, for example, Chris Bledsoe, uh, when Bob McGuire goes there, the scientist from the Institute for Defense Analysis after he retires, he has the hitchhiker and follows him home, but him and his wife both get cured when they get home. And so that was hitchhiker thing. Yeah. So it, it's this reflective. Do you find uh -huh. that there may be this reflective element that if you're aggressive towards the phenomena, you have you have problems, and if you're you're not, you have a you have a better experience. Yeah, it almost is. It's like you know, uh, you you attract what what you are. <laughs> what you put out, yeah, 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 and and and, and so I, I believe that I believe that just as it is here on this plane, it's probably on that plane as well. Uh, a very similar thing. You know, because people talk about, well, are are these all these aliens bad? Like you know, the Bud Hopkins and David Jacobs uh, camp, and 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 then you have the people like Greer who are it's all positive, and I think it's both. I totally think it's both. Just like we have good people and bad people down here, that's the same thing going on up there or here <laughs> in this dim another dimension. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like I always make the joke. I said when they dropped the first atomic bomb, give me a call. I mean, because, you know, we, we look at ourselves as the good guys. And we dropped the atomic bomb and we firebombed cities in World War II and cremated all these people alive and stuff. And then we think, you know, the, the it's always the other guy who's the evil guy. You mentioned the, the paranormal thing, which I'm always very interested in. The mm -hmm. para, And a lot of people who haven't read abduction books like, like this book or the Experiencer book will not realize this very critical uh, component. To, it's not just you're being taken on board a ship and stuff. You have all this weird stuff that happens. Can you talk a little bit about that, about some of the stuff that people have around them, you know, with lights and with uh, electri electronics and ghosts and all this kind of stuff? Yeah, I, you know, there, there's people that, you know, have come back after an experience and, you know, they, they affect the uh, lights in their house, uh, their, their watch. They can't wear a watch. Uh, they, there's uh, multiple... Uh, uh, effects on their TV, even if the TV comes on, it just shuts off. It does all kinds of things like that. Uh, so yeah, from from the electronics world, you you have all types of effects going on. Um, you know, you have light uh, emanations that come in. Yellow and blue are two probably the most uh, dominant colors that uh, precede a, a an abduction. Uh, people talk about. Uh, so. Uh, you know, and then then you have the, the physical aspects of it. Uh, what, what's going on with these people? Uh, you know, they're usually in a in a room. You know, on a table, a, a metal like table, uh, and uh, they're they're probed with various instruments. Uh, various types of fluid are taken, whether it's sperm or eggs. Uh, or, you know, blood. Uh, and then the room itself is is usually a, a rounded type room, a uh, dome shape. Uh, you know, very bright lights, uh, things that come down out of the ceiling uh, uh, with various patterns on it. Uh, and, and, and then you have multiple types of uh, entities, uh, a lot of them with uh, just three fingers, no, no, uh, and a long palm, no, no thumb, uh, with these indentations on the end that are like sensors. And, and they're also able to uh, influence uh, you know the uh, the abductee um you know calm them down or or put them out uh, or things of that nature um so uh, <laughs> you know the, the these these types of things are are just mind blowing uh, as far as the various types of effects physical psychological uh effects uh you know whether or not you're actually looking at uh, a, a woman standing there, or is it, you know, a gray that's uh, uh, cloaked in some way, shape, or form? Uh, it, it's all totally uh, possible. And uh, or, or the the one, the latest one that came to me, or is it your spirit guide who's uh, Im screen imaging is a gray? Because one of the guys, I don't know, if he's a military guy, he was a submarine guy who came to me and said this whole thing, and he met his spirit guide. He was told, you know, in this meditation or whatever, your spirit guide is going to appear. And suddenly he said there was this gray standing there. And he said, what the heck's going on? And it's like this whole idea. 
that it, when you get into the screen imaging thing uh, with reality, that you know everything is going through your head. That you what mm -hmm. you see maybe not be what you what you're actually experiencing. It really gets really weird as to what what are we really looking at here. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's the kind of thing where you know what 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 is the reality of the situation? You know, is, are you actually looking at what you know you believe to be a person, or is this something other than a person? Uh, it 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 just you know. It's a way, I mean, that totally messes with your mind. Uh, you know, do I believe that I'm seeing what I'm seeing or is it something else, uh, which it possibly could be? Um, you know, we, we have hallucinations. Uh, those are possible. Um, you know, uh, it could be a sign of, you know, some medical issues that you might have. But at the same time, when these people come back and they try to... Uh, uh, you know, understand what happened, they may go to a psychologist, psychiatrist, or to a doctor, and they find out there's nothing wrong with them. They're perfectly fine. So what the hell happened? <laughs> That's the that, question. So you, your book is The Unknown Other. And, and, and they, remind me how many cases you uh, go through in this book? There, there's about 25 in there. Okay. Uh, how many of these people that would come to Opus would be uh, getting regression? And, and let's deal with the the sort of the the whole subject of, of regression uh, okay. in terms of pulling the screen image where people think, oh, I saw like an owl, uh, you know, a, uh, like Barbara Streisand's stepson told me there was a five foot owl. Him and his wife saw this five foot owl in the bathroom mm -hmm. sitting on the counter. I said, really? Was it five feet tall? I said, yeah, it was five feet tall because you hear the four foot and you hear these weird things. <laughs> and again, it comes to this thing where what are you really looking at? And that's where I think the advantage of hypnosis is you can sort of get past these screen images and you can talk to the person and say, Go up and take a closer look. What is it really? So, talk about regression and how many of the people that that you deal with uh, will come for regression, or how do you really deal with people? What do you do with when when you get yeah. a call with somebody? Sure. Well, first of all, um, on our website, which is uh, opusnetwork.org, which is behind me on my uh, screen <laughs> thing back there, yeah. um, they will they will generally contact just through that site, uh, there's a, a place for support. And a couple of the items, one is, uh, you know, uh, wanting to be a part of the support group, uh, which is free, it's uh, confidential. Uh, and uh, then the other aspect is looking for professional help. And that's when we, 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 we talk to them and understand what, what kind of professional help are you looking for. And nine times out of 10, it's uh, hypnotherapy. Yeah. Um, and then what we utilize is a list that we've compiled. And I'm also a member of the MUFON ERT, the uh, Experiencer Resource yeah. Team, yeah. and uh, as a research consultant. And uh, we have a list there of uh, you know, people that have registered with us that are, are credentialed, uh, certified, and have insurance, uh, which is important. And um, we, we have pretty much uh, covered the United States, but there are holes uh, where we don't have people in a particular state. But then again, we have people that have uh, stepped up, especially during this COVID uh, situation, to do Zoom or Skype uh, type uh, sessions. Yeah. However, when it's, it's, it's probably not the best way to do it. Uh, you want to be, you know, with, with the hypnotherapist, the one-on-one. -on -one. But uh, other than that, uh, it's important to uh, have someone with the, uh, uh, the experiencer uh, that, you know, may be a friend or, or a, you know, a relative or somebody that is understanding, <laughs> which a lot of them aren't. Um, and uh, then that session could, could uh, proceed because sometimes these sessions, you know, like Betty and Barney Hill, uh, Barney, you know, freaked out during his uh, uh, regression, and it was important that there was a professional there to bring them, bring them out, and bring them down. Uh, so that's that's pretty much how we, we do. And um, you know, as far as follow up to those things, that's why we're trying to do uh, the second phase of the Omega Four study is where we're now going out to the. Uh, clients of these therapists uh, to get their feedback. And so hopefully uh, generate uh, some new different information. And 
And uh, matter of fact, we're in the process of pub publishing the uh, phase one information from the therapist of what we found. So that, that'll be coming out here shortly. You also link them up. I, I think you told me before you link them up where they can actually interact with each other. And this is all sort of private. Yes. yes. Uh, the, the online support group, uh, which is, as I said, uh, uh, totally confidential. The only way you get into it is to come through us. Uh, nobody can see that from the outside. It's a totally private uh, group. And uh, they, they talk to them, uh, you know, one another 24 seven. It's a constant and I monitor that as well as a couple of other people in our, in our group uh, that look at this thing. And we've had some situations where people, you know, are, are really, really uh, at wit's end and, uh, and we've had to occasionally uh, give them the, uh, the suicide hotline number uh, oh. to contact uh, because it's been so bad. But that actually turns out to be very rare, very rare. Uh, so thank goodness. <laughs> do, you, do you find that the regression always helps people? That that it, it's always moves them ahead, or 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 even the thing of digging into the case. Do, does it well, get worse, or do you find well, that? Well, <laughs> that's. I'm glad you asked that question because <clears throat> when people are are looking at this, we we first of all tell them, Are you sure? you want to go forward with this because you may find out something that will be really upsetting. And there's, you know, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube, yeah. you know, <laughs> after it comes out. Uh, you know, so, you know, you need to be very sure that you want to go forward with it. So we, we kind of almost counsel against it in a way. Uh, and then when they, they, they feel absolutely ready, then we say, yeah, sure, here's, here's a couple of names for you in, in your area that you can contact. And, you know, uh, hopefully uh, you'll, you'll find out what you want to find out. Uh, unfortunately, in, in a lot of cases, uh, you know, uh, we don't hear back from them, but uh, they, they're still in the support group. And so they're talking, uh, you know, to their fellow members and, and you know, asking questions. Um, the, the big thing right now is that a lot of them are seeing these, these patterns, patterns with, with uh, symbols in it. And, and so now we're trying to uh, put together a, a, a listing of all these symbols. And in my book, actually, uh, I have a section on psychography uh, that uh, Mario Pasaglini uh, did uh, years ago. Uh, where he collected uh, all this writing that people had, for whatever reason, were compelled to put down. And I mean, it's symbols. It, 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 some of it looks Arabic, some of it looks Korean, some of it looks like, I don't know what. Uh, it's, it's, it's all over the place. And, uh, you know, even Betty Andres, Andres, Andresen, you know, uh, had that ability to write out and the only thing I think they, they were able to define or she was able to understand was like, uh, if you want, you want the answer, you, you've got to go to the moon or some, some, some phrase that, that they were able to pick out. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. That, that, that's, that's almost worth the price, price of admission for your book. I mean, the symbols, because that's, um, I've looked a lot of that. Have you gotten, we, Nicole and I did a book on triangles. Have you got the people with the triangles on their wrists and stuff like that where oh. they're obsessed with triangles? Oh yeah, as a matter of fact, it, it also in the book I have a whole series of pictures of of, uh, of things just like that. Uh, there's triangles, there's dots and triangle patterns, there's even complicated uh, patterns where there's a circle with an X in it and uh, some uh, spokes that come off of that. Uh, and then then there's a woman that uh, sent me a picture. It looked like she stepped on a grate on her foot and it had all these uh, basically uh, scoop marks on the bottom of her feet. And it, it, she doesn't remember how that occurred or when that occurred. And, and, and she did not step on a hot grate. What do you make of this? Cause I mean, it doesn't like, I, you can see like there used to be the old thing about the scoop mark or whatever, they could take a, a, a skin sample. But how do you explain a triangle? Like, why would you put a triangle on somebody's wrist other than yeah. they want you to go like, wow, what's going on here? Or that's not a dream or this is for real. And and you get these people. There's even one very famous singer 
um, who I can't recall, and she, I can't remember the song she wrote, but she'd sell 11 million albums and, and she only had one uh, uh, tattoo on her whole body and it was a, a red triangle on her wrist. And, and the song was definitely an experiential song that she was being abducted. And Demi, 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 Demi Lovato, Demi Lovato. No, it wasn't Lovato, that? it was, um, uh, the song was called Light, um, where she's talking about being in the light and, and I'm frozen in, this, in, the, in the light and stuff like that. Mm. But it, there's a number of us uh, experiencers that are that are singers, which again comes to this thing, which is one of the questions I would ask is, is what kind of people do you have? Do you have uh, like an equal number of men and women? Because Roger Lear was asked, because I did the whole book on UFO experiencers or paranormal and music. And Robert uh, or Roger Lear in did the 17 alien implants asked him what's common between all experiences. And what he said was they're all right brain creative people and there's piles of them here in Hollywood and all implants are on the left side of the body. And this was this idea about this uh, sort of um, person, you know, this sort of attitude where these people are more artists than they are lawyers. So what do you have most, like, do you have any sort of patterns that you've seen in terms of men versus women or creative yeah. people versus? I think, I think, you know, we definitely have more women than men. Um, and I think that that boils down to, to, go back you go back in in time and and you know women have traditionally been you know witches or they've been uh you know shaman or it, it, it's, it's it's like almost inbred in in the female and and so the spiritual journey uh seems to be very powerful in in the women uh more so than in the men um and uh, as far as the markings on the body, I almost think of it as uh, is, uh, is, is like uh, cattle being, uh, you know, <laughs> um, yeah. marked, you know. Yeah. Except the cattle know it this time. The cattle are sitting there wondering why, why are they putting this, this sort of brand on me? It's like branding. It's kind of, exactly. It's, it's kind of weird. That's where, and I know if people, they, they need to read these kind of books because that's what I say. And I would encourage people to read your book and your research is because that's what I say is you, you can only determine so much by a light in the sky. You saw a UFO, I saw a UFO, mm -hmm. and you can only go so far with that. But it's, it's when you start talking to the experiencers, that's when it really gets weird and you start to maybe not understand, but you realize that this is a very significant thing and there's something actually going on here. And there are people who are actually interacting with whatever the intelligence is that's behind this whole thing. Yeah, I've, I've, I've learned more working with the experiencers in the support groups than, than any other, you know, Book that I had picked up at the time when I, you know, joined uh, MUFON uh, back in '91. Uh, so it, it is phenomenal. It's phenomenal, and you're right. There's something going on, and the question is, what is it? And you know, should we be should we be frightened by it? Uh, should we uh, try to better understand it? Absolutely. Uh, it's unfortunate that we don't have, and on, I think it's starting to. The, that's that logjam is starting to break about our scientific community now starting to get a little bit more interested because of this UAP report. You know, the government now saying, yeah, there's something out there and it's not us and it's not them, uh, but we don't know what it is. Uh, yeah. So what is it? Yeah, it may, it may be like this gradual, because people seem to always forget that there's not just the government covering up, the intelligence is covering up as well. And yet they're doing this gradual disclosure. So when you see the UFO, I always make the joke, I say to people, so what was the UFO doing? And they always go, it wasn't doing anything, it was just there. Do you think it saw you? Yeah, I think it saw me. And, and it's sort of like they're doing this gradual disclosure where they're, they're sort of dropping yeah. these breadcrumbs and yeah. even the metal stuff. I don't know if you got into metal stuff, yeah. but that's why I said to Jacques Vallée, Jacques, this makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, you come across the, the universe and you dodge galaxies and black holes and whatever, and you get here and then the craft crashes or it starts to, little pieces start falling off it. It's like, it's almost like they're doing this gradual disclosure where they keep, they just want you to think, they're not giving you answers but they're making you go through the work. Do you find that? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and again, in the book, uh, in Adam's story, he talks about the, the fact that he's asking questions and they tell him, no, you, you, you won't understand, not yet, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your what's your you got the 25 cases or that yeah. number uh what what's the the one the highlight case that that just sort of blows you away and and for you and i would probably be like really weird like it, so it, what, is, what's it the, is i would say adam's case which is uh, 
it's it's the second one in. The first one is basically somebody thanking Opus for you know the support group, but the second one by Adam, that's the one you want to read. That that is, it's got everything. It's got the reincarnation in it. It it's got the you know multiple entities in it with amazing descriptions. Um, and you know the source is in that that section as well. Uh, yeah, if you want you want to forget the rest of them, you want to read that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's always one of those where it's sort of just like you, you just it just gives you the idea how massive and how complex this subject is. I don't think people have any clue. Maybe you and I, because we've been in for so many years, you just come to the conclusion that this thing is just gets more complex the more you look at it. And it's just, uh, it's like how reality works. And reality is not as simple as science has sort of tried to sort of cover it up and say, you know, it's just, don't worry about it. It's just placebo. It's just delusion. It's just this. And they're making all these words that are covering for the ignorance as to uh, the idea that all they're, all what science is basically doing at this point is describing what's going on. They're not explaining anything. They're just describing. Mm -hmm. And when you start looking at how complex the UFO phenomena is, you realize, I mean, it is just, uh, we have no clue what's going on. Oh, I, I totally agree with you, Grant. It's, it, it's the kind of thing where you, you, I remember when I first got started in this thing and, and you know, your, your window of believability may be only about this, this big, but now, <laughs> oh my God, it's, it's way out there, um, you know, uh, because you hear it time and time again, and and and, and these people are sincere. They're not, you know, they're, and they don't have a psychopathology, and 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 so, at least we don't understand it if it's a psychopathology. If it is, it's one weird psychopathology, um, and and you know, it, so it, it's something's going on, yeah. and we certainly don't have a full understanding of it, if any. Wow. Well, let me close a little bit with a couple of weird, because you talked about the, uh, well, may, first, let me ask you a question about synchronicities. Have you hmm. found in your experience, your career, that you've had these sort of synchronicities that have sort of led you from one uh, one situation to another that, um, that you're sort of, whether it's a guidance or whether it's just whatever it is, because um, I've found that, that the synchronicities get very strange that you're dragged into it. It's not you just watching cases. It seems to involve you as well. Yeah, I, I you know, uh, I seem to end up in places like either on a business trip or on, you know, uh, a vacation uh, in an area where something has happened. And, and <laughs> uh, you know, UFO, ufologically uh, speaking, um, and, and, you know, I've always wondered, you know, why is it that I'm, I'm going to these places and then I hear these stories and it's almost like reinforcing, uh, the whole thing that I'm doing, you know, it's like, no, you got to keep going. Okay. See, you're here in this place and this happened. <laughs> and yeah. So now you need to, you need to, uh, you know, to pay attention and, uh, you know, learn from this or get something out of it. Um, yeah. Uh, it's definitely definitely happening it's definitely happening so some of the weird things I'm, I'm doing a book on apports and manifestations have you got any of that kind of stuff because i find like we mentioned that this paranormal stuff happens the hitchhiker happens mm -hmm. like they, they they'll put it like hitchhiker oh it happened at skinwalker ranch and it's like you and i who may be in the field for like 40 years going like what are you talking about it happens in ghosts it happens in almost every experience or experience hitchhiker thing that weird you know starts to spread it's you get involved with it uh so have you had any of these kind of apports where things appear disappear move around and this kind of stuff uh yeah and, and again a lot of that seems to be um tied in with poltergeist activity um uh, more so than any anything uh, that I've that I've run into anyway, um, uh, you know, things being th thrown across the room or and and you know the, the, these are the cases. And and by the way, uh, w Opus is not just involved with uh, you know abduction type cases, uh, such as our name says, organization for paranormal understanding and support, where where uh, as it turned out, however. Uh, we seem to be really dominated by the abduction phenomena and what we work with, but we also have abilities to uh, 
look at poltergeist activity. And that's where you have a lot of this uh, abort type stuff going on where things are appearing and disappearing um, and uh, things, you know, moving across the room or falling off the table or, or things of that nature. Which leads me to the question, have you done EVPs? Have you done, have you done paranormal investigations and stuff like that? Not, my, not me personally, no. Um, that, I mean, uh, I, Lloyd Auerbach, Lloyd Auerbach uh, who we, we refer people to, is, has done a lot of that. Oh, well, we have to get him on a panel. I'm doing a panel on EVPs because that's what you sort of find is when you talk to people, whether it be uh, Deborah Cobble or um, uh, what's his name with Children of the Gray. I never even think of his name. Uh, they, they, everybody else sort of gets into paranormal uh, investigations. They, ha they have their UFO experience with whatever mm -hmm. Grays or whoever. And then suddenly they're obsessed with uh, EVPs and stuff. So I want to do a panel on on the experiencers who have uh, suddenly got into the EVP and sort of look at some of the stuff. Because a lot of them, like Deborah Cobble, is just, she, when you start talking about EVP, she's like really, really interested. In, and she was the main character in Intruders. And yet yeah. her she gets absolutely fascinated when you get into EVPs. She seems uh -huh. to be almost more interested in that than she is in UFOs. Yeah, I, and again, I, I, there's a wide range of, of things going on uh, with these experiencers. Uh, again, uh, all, all this is connected in some way, shape, or form, I think. Uh, and, uh, you know, I had a, had a case uh, where we not only had a, 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 a ghost that was uh, haunting this house, uh, it was a, a, a kid that committed suicide in the house, but then there was also a demon involved, in, wow. in the, a real scary-looking demon. And they, they brought in this person that said, well, the reason why this is going on uh, is because there's a ley line that runs through the house and they're coming out of this ley line. And, and, and so uh, they were able to get rid of the, uh, the person, uh, the kid that committed suicide, uh, sent him on his way, uh, but they were never able to get rid of the demon and they eventually sold the house. People bought the house and shortly thereafter sold it again. And, Evidently, that neighborhood where this line went, ley line went through, had multiple issues with the houses where the, these these demons were showing up, and they were putting large scratches on people's backs, and and uh, you know just basically uh, being nasty. Wow. <laughs> Another question is, um, and this gets into the motives of whatever the beings are. And I just had an interview with the head of uh, MUFA in Japan. He's had a number of experiences. He's on the uh, the, com the committee that you're the MUFON yeah. experiences yeah, committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's had three experiences, but he also got into this whole thing where he started using out of body experience. He was he had gone to the Monroe Institute, done the, the, the course and stuff like that, and had learned to make contact using that. And then he gets in, I was interviewing him and he started saying, Oh, well, then I flew the craft. I said, Okay, <laughs> I've got 50 people who have flown the craft. Tell me how you fly the craft. And, yeah. and of course, he went through this whole procedure and it's like him reading off a cue card, exactly what everybody else says. And this is this whole thing about consciousness. There's this, the craft is alive. You become one to the craft yeah. and, you know, whatever you think is what the craft does and stuff like that. Why would the beings, first of all, if you get any of the people that you've got that have flown the craft? And number two, why do you think that the intelligence is doing stuff like teaching people to levitate things, teaching them to write alien language, teaching them to fly the craft? Uh, what what is this about? Because you can see the hybrid thing, but the hybrid thing, how long does it take to get sperm and egg? I mean, like, and the people are gone for hours, you know, and I had guys who would come to me and say, uh -huh. you got to stop it. They're taking me every night. I can't do it. I mean, I'm in uh -huh. this school and they keep going and I, I can't take this anymore. And so there's more that's going on than the hybrid thing. It's it's this training. What do you think is going on with the training? And have you had anybody who's reported to you they've flown the craft? Yes, I've had a couple of people uh, over the years uh, talk about, uh, you know, getting taught how to fly the craft, you know, and, and, and it almost sounds, well, well matter of fact, uh, one of our advisory board members, uh, Terry Lovelace, uh, flew a craft. I don't know if you've had him on your show. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, and, and so he, he flew a craft. Uh, and... Uh, and what's the purpose of that? I mean, he, you know, exactly. he's been abducted and 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 had a damn scary, you know, he's the he's one of the guys that wants it to stop. He doesn't want this to go on anymore. I mean, he, he had a really bad time, and um, you know, 
what what is the purpose? I have no clue, no <laughs> clue why they would want to teach you how to fly the craft. You know, it, you're not going to be coming up there. You know, I had one person. This is years ago. Tell me, uh, you are a commander in the in the Palladian army, and uh, or fleet, the Palladian yeah. fleet. And I said, really? <laughs> I, I, I said, well, maybe that's why I'm so involved with all this stuff. I'm a, I'm a Palladian. <laughs> it, it gets it gets very very strange, very very strange. I mean, that's. Oh. But but it's it's interesting. I mean, it's like what what else could you possibly do? That's why I say it's the Super Bowl of all stories in terms of how important it is, but also the excitement of the story. Because I mean, if you were to go back to watching TV, you'd go totally crazy compared to what we're doing. I mean, the stuff that you're doing is like just so seems so important and so weird that you sort of feel sorry for the people who aren't involved. Like, what do you do with your time? Like. You know, how can you be talking about other people and find that exciting or gossiping or talking politics or whatever like that? You know, so, you know, it, 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 it's it, it, it's an interesting point, uh, Grant, that, you know, people get up in the morning, have breakfast, go to work, come home in, in the evening, have dinner, watch a little TV, go to bed, yeah. get up in the morning. That whole routine yeah. gets over and over and over again. And there's some kind of conscious dissonance going on yeah. with the majority of people that this this just does not enter their mind there's no room for it there's it just can't happen it can't yeah. happen yeah and I why, I why you and i why you and i are are doing this and, and interested in this stuff i mean it's just it's yeah it's all it's almost like they're at their level but the, the level is when you know someone tells them they got three months to live then they're scrambling around trying to figure out what's going on where am i going to go what's happening and you and i spend basically our whole lives trying to figure out like where do we come from? Where are we going? What's going on? What is reality? And it's it's uh, I can't see anything more important. But I mean, I guess that's our job is, you know, maybe the thing that because you and I have a higher understanding of what's going on, we have more responsibility to to put it out there because we can't really say, you know, if it comes down to the end of our lives and and we get some sort of judgment, we can't really say, well, you know, I forgot I was going to do it. But, you know, COVID came and then I decided I wasn't going to do it. I mean, you, <laughs> you you knew you had, you know, too much is given, much is expected that you and I are in sort of a, a position where we've got a lot of information. And if it's important, like we say it is, it's up to us. The onus is on us to try to get it across to other people and the people that are that are ready, which is probably going to be the young kids. You know, I don't think you're ever going to convince uh, the old people, as I always point out with Stan Friedman's files, which I went to see. I mean, mm -hmm. Stan spent 61 years, and he would always say the thing, like he I argued with Philip Klass at Oxford University, and 78% mm -hmm. of the people believed he won the debate, but he never convinced Phil Klass of anything. He never convinced <laughs> o Oberg or no. any of these people. And no. You can't convince the old people. It's like Max Planck says, an idea does not uh, advance <laughs> by you convincing your opponent, it, it, they, they die off and the new generation is, is yes. not offended with the idea. Yeah, yeah, I have that in my book too. <laughs> that statement yeah. is totally right. <laughs> it's totally right on. Um, yeah. So the yeah, young they, people, I think, will probably, and, and maybe that's what it is. I mean, I, I remember, uh, I, I now joke because I used to say, when Steve used to say, when is disclosure going to come? I'd say in front of panels and stuff, I'd say 2042. I never thought it would happen. So when the New York Times article came out, and I remember Stephen Greer had done, I wrote an article called 64 Reasons They've Decided Not to Tell You the Truth. And one of the things was Stephen Greer's contention was that when they discover that the government is actually working on this, then oil is not worth anything and the stock market's going to melt down and crash. And of course, I believe that as well. But what happened when the New York Times article came out, everybody went, yeah, I knew that already. Go on, we knew that already. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's like, and that's what's happening is this, this climatization thing that the young people, I'm pretty sure, will say, oh, yeah, there's extraterrestrials that are coming here. It doesn't offend them. They, they grew up with different ideas. And so you and I are probably just building the, the roadway for the next generation that will actually take this thing to disclosure. Oh, well, yeah, we, we can only hope, Grant. Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, I, I just felt that, you know, putting this book out there is, is some, it's just another marker, you know, something that somebody can pick up and hopefully read and uh, understand that there's something else going on in this world besides, uh, you know, us and the Russians and the Chinese, uh, you know, <laughs> about yeah. to go to war or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. So what, where, where do you go from here? You, your book, The Unknown uh, the unknown Other is out. It's, I assume it's on Amazon. People can pick it yes. up. 
And yep. Opus, if they want to contact your group or ask you questions, they can go to Opus and, and contact you there. Uh, what, yep. What's your future plans in terms of uh, research? Well, uh, like I said, the, the next phase of the uh, Omega-4 study is to go out to the clients of these therapists that we interviewed uh, and had them uh, do a, a survey for us. And so uh, it's going to be quite an extensive uh, questionnaire, uh, probably 200 questions wow. uh, that we hope to uh, get the feedback on, and then we'll, we'll, we'll publish that as well. Uh, and like I said earlier, that uh, we're going to put that uh, first phase out here shortly. Uh, matter of fact, we're, we're just submitting it to a couple of journals. Uh, so for peer review and, and let them take a look at it. Uh, wow. Yeah. So you, you've actually got some of the research done already. Yes. Yeah. That, wow. that first phase. Yeah. And I can talk about that uh, when uh, we get this thing published uh, yeah. right now. We're, Sure, the, I'd love to have you back on to talk about that. We, we, yeah. give, give me an idea of where you were going with your questions. And in terms of 200 questions, you must have some idea of things you wanted to sort oh, of nail I, down. I mean, it, it, it's, it's extensive. I, I mean, we, we, we try to look at all the phases uh, of, of, of the phenomena uh, from the physical, the psychological, um, the uh, the more mundane aspects of it, you know, uh, uh, the the personalities of these entities, you know, how would you describe them? You know, are they, are they, you know, curious? Are they, uh, you know, it, it, there's a whole series of questions that uh, uh, we we look at in the, in those terms. But it, it should be a very interesting one, one that is different than certainly the free study, and. Uh, certainly uh, much more in depth than the omega-3 study that we did, uh, which I think I talked about in our first session with you, yeah. uh, the, the results that we, we came up with, which were interesting in the sense that, you know, these people did not have a psychopathology and there was something going on different in their temporal lobe area than the control group, uh, which, you know, the Gary Nolans of the world, I guess, have kind of confirmed some of that already. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, but that's the thing is they're basing it on us. We're sort of leading the way that we, you know, we may not have it like validated through MRIs and stuff like that, but you, you have to listen to the patterns that are being put up by the experiences to know what to research if you're going to do a scientific study on it. And so I appreciate the fact that you're, you're helping these people and you're doing this work and, uh, uh, you'll always be a friend of mine because uh, I keep maintaining that we are ignoring the experiences. We are ignoring the people who actually, if there's any answers to be had, they've got it. I, I don't think you're going to learn very much by looking at lights in the sky. You've got to get to the people who are actually interacting with the phenomena. So I, I can uh, congratulate you for your work on this and, and for helping people who are, as you point out, and in some ways, you know, almost suicidal. They're, they're totally obsessed with what is happening, what's going on. And uh, you, you've been a, a rock and a support to them. So I, I appreciate and thank you for that. Well, thank you. I, I thank you very much, Grant, for having me on your, on your show. I, I really, truly appreciate it. And uh, why don't you message me your, your snail mail address and I'll send you a book. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, wonderful. And uh, make sure you let me know when uh, your next yeah. with your study comes out and we'll, yeah. we'll do another uh, session and uh, We'll continue this because there's not that many people. You got Kathy Martin, you got you, you got a few people that are in depth doing this work, but everybody else I think is sort of chasing ghosts as I, I look at it. It's like, I mean, we've done this UFO sighting thing for 75 years and we can't we can't do it again. We can't start, you know, gathering UFO sightings again. We have to we have to get beyond that. So you're one of the few people that's doing it and congratulations to you. Thank thank you, Grant. And and uh God bless you. Beautiful. <laughs> or source bless you. <laughs> yes. What, what, whoever it is. I agree. Whoever it is. It, it, you, I think you make the same point as I do, as, as I've stopped using the word ET or alien or stuff. I just call it intelligence because when yeah. you start looking at it, you start to wonder, like, what is this really? I mean, it becomes a less uncertain. And I think anybody who goes off some tangent is actually uh, probably just sort of uh, going in the wrong direction because you look at it and it's much more complex than ETs or near interdimensionals. I, I, I have no clue. So I just call it the intelligence and I see you're doing the same sort of thing. Yep. 
Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks again, Les, and let's talk again soon. Absolutely. Thanks, Grant. Have okay. a good one. Yeah, you bet. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.